past friendship leads to seduction by the powers of young Dracula. With the curse of the undead, Lana becomes the tool of his evil plan. Not even Superboy is immune to the supernatural. Lana is anxious for death. How about you? Will this curse be the end for the Boy of Steel on the next Superboy? Hello everyone and welcome back to Superboy Beyond and we are continuing with our Halloween month or Spooktober or whatever the hell we decided to call it in the end. <laughs> We're probably going to change the name every single episode because who cares, it's not that important. We are back with Young Dracula once again. Uh, last week we did the first Young Dracula episode and now we are returning to it with Run Dracula Run, the follow-up and final appearance of Byron Shelley which is a shame. I think, you know, they abandoned a lot of season two stuff for three and four because they were going for a darker tone. But if there's any character that really would have benefited from a darker tone, it's this one, you know? Yeah. Him I, and Brimstone would, would have benefited for, from it. Absolutely, absolutely. But uh, anyway, if you're watching along at home, this is season two, episode 16. And if this is your first time watching alongside us, uh, you are not going to be seeing any clips from the episode itself, no audio. Basically, what you'll see in the corner there, in the middle, uh, is a heavily filtered version of the episode. It's literally made of black and white dots, purely so that Warner Brothers can't say that we're trying to uh, give you a replacement for the show. This is supplemental material, not replacement. So, right. And that's yeah. just put up there so that you guys can keep track with your own your own copy at home. Yeah, it's very easy to get out of sync when you're watching stuff like this. And if you've not got something on screen, or even if you, you know, if you needed to go and like pause it because somebody rings you on the phone or somebody knocks at your door, it's going to be really hard to get back in sync with us. At least this way, you know if you're in sync or not. Yep. Uh, so yeah, get your copy of the show on DVD. I believe this is on disc two. Did you say? Yes, disc two. Uh... Okay. Yeah. It's right in between Microboy and Brimstone. Right. So, yeah, Season 2, Episode 16, Run, Dracula, Run. And we'll count you in with a 3, 2, 1 play. And as long as you hit play when we do, you'll be in sync. So, 3, 2, 1, play. So, yeah, um, I remembered not liking the first part like the first Young Dracula episode, and obviously we touched on it in the last commentary, I enjoyed it a lot more than I remembered. It's still not a great one, you know, 7 out of 10. It's not the worst score in the world, but it's... It's like know, a mediocre. It, yeah, it has a lot of unfulfilled potential. Um, but you did say that you remember this one being by far the better episode. Is that right? Yeah, uh, you, know, the, you know, we don't have to deal with the cheap looking vampire yeah he's dead now you know superboy flew him even like actually the weird thing is he technically superboy flew him further away from the sun to kill him yeah but yeah i guess he was waiting for it to poke out from around the earth but uh here he is again dr byron shelley you picked the wrong guy <laughs> he just shot his own girlfriend Jesus that is dark oh and he yeah. still steals the stuff what a creep Although I guess addicts don't think particularly, uh, you know, they don't think things through particularly well, do they? How is it that he fights 
Byron's mesmerism. Maybe, I don't know, maybe he's got so many drugs in his system. <laughs> it's just his brain chemistry is all messed up or something. I don't know. Or maybe Byron's just weakened at this point. Maybe his medicine that he's giving himself weakens his powers slightly. As I always do, you know, I'm always looking for a headcanon solution for a slightly iffy bit of writing. Yeah. I will say, you know, putting it, putting the, 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 the next few sequences in the, uh, the funeral home mm. really, really does heighten the, uh, the creepy factor. Really gives it a film noir feel without being black and white. Mm. Which is funny because with the very strong like red and blue lighting, it does actually remind me because we were talking about in the last episode how Byron's kind of this show's equivalent of Batman. In the Batman movie, they have a very similar sort of lighting style where it's very noirish, but they're not afraid of bold color. So it's, it's there's a similar sort of approach in terms of the lighting, you know. Obviously, the Batman had a considerable amount of money behind it, so it does look better. But it's interesting that they're sort of approaching it from a similar direction there. Yeah. And I, I like how Andy is, you know, stepping up to the plate a little bit to try and be a little bit more of a heroic character here. Mm. He doesn't want Lana going alone. Now, maybe that's, you know, just, you know, Andy being... Andy and being lustful for her. Yeah, it could well be, you know, Andy is just trying to score points with Lana, but I don't know. I, I think I, I honestly think that Andy does have a considerable character arc. One of maybe even one of the only character arcs on the show, really. Because let's face it, it is purely episodic. Yeah, Andy is given a character arc, which is just, he's the only one, which is very strange. Because even okay. Superboy doesn't have much of one. Okay, him walking around with a... With all the garlic. Yeah, that's a little <laughs> ridiculous. No, I, I like it. It's, it's a very Andy thing to do, you know. He's going into a vampire's house. Take all the garlic you can. Although it does remind me slightly, you know, whenever I see just that much garlic in a vampire thing, it reminds me of Dracula dead and loving it in the bedroom scene. Yeah. I, I love the, the, the bravado he has here. <laughs> Which is funny because this episode is showing that Andy is having some character development. He's becoming slightly more heroic, but he's still somewhat of a misogynist, you know? Yeah. He's not quite... He's not gotten all the way there yet. Which is funny because when we actually see him again in season three, he's almost a completely different character because he's actually been humbled by working in the film industry. He, he's a little less... Uh, what's the word? A little less sure of himself. Maybe, but he's still very clearly Andy. Yeah. I'm glad that he got one more episode just to round out his character arc. But yeah, the lighting in this episode is much better than the previous, I've got to say. like, And it's interesting as well, just with this shot in particular, because I swear it looks like those cheesy like romance novels, like cheesy vampire romance novels you'd have like you could literally just cut that out and put that on the cover of the book <laughs> yeah maybe have byron played by uh what's his name fabio uh, fabio yeah <laughs> with his shirt open exposing one nipple as he always <laughs> does but the way the lighting is done yeah it's very it's very noirish it's very horror but it's also got the romantic element that vampires are always known for yeah and the best part and the, the 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 contrast here is this is all set during the day but the it's dark 
you know, presumably yeah, he's blacked out the windows or something. Yeah. But he, you know, he can walk around in daylight, so. Yeah, but remember, he doesn't have his medicine, so it's getting. True, true. So, yeah, the weaknesses as well as the, uh... yeah. I like that. That was a good line. Yeah. It's funny. There's um, a TV show that it started in Britain, but I know there was an American remake. It was called Being Human, and it was about a vampire, a werewolf, and a ghost that share a house. Right. But uh, in the British version, there's an episode where one of the characters tries to use a cross, but it doesn't work. And it turns out it's because this character is Jewish and the cross only works if you believe in the power behind it. So then he pulls out the Star of David and that works against vampires. It turns out any religious symbol works as long as you have the belief behind it. Which I guess would mean that if an atheist went up against a vampire, they're fucked. Yeah. <laughs> like I would be dead in an instant, you know. I mean, I would be dead anyway, just... But there you go. I seriously doubt I'd do well against a vampire. Now that smoke effect as he was sucking it in just then could have been better, but I don't know. It was fine, I guess. But it is funny, as you say, you know, total darkness inside. The moment they get outside, it's just beautiful sunshine. That looked better. It looked worse when he sucked it in. When he blew it out, that actually looked relatively okay. And that, that whole you... line that, that uh, Byron says, you know, about the cross, it does come to play, you know, later on. Mm. But it's a nice little bit of lore that in, you know, in this universe, vampires, the cross isn't enough on its own. You need the will behind it as well. It's just one piece of the puzzle, I guess. But yeah, I, th I think that's an interesting bit of uh, lore information there. Yeah. And, and the funny thing about this whole sequence with, with Stacy, you know, biting his neck, she later went on to do a TV show. True Blood, Kindred. yeah. No, it was Kindred. Oh, she was in True Blood as well, though. She oh. was a vamp uh, werewolf, though, in True Blood. I believe. That is, yeah, I like that line. You know, even Superboy is not immune to the supernatural. That's more what I would class Mixus Pitlick as. Less magic, more supernatural, fifth dimensional weirdness mm. but they do call it magic in superboy so i kind of see it but yeah if this by this point he has gone up against multiple magic based villains i imagine that And, you know, I did say at the end of the last episode that leaving it in sort of a dark place where you don't know, is he going to turn bad? I really like that this episode wasn't afraid to go there. Yeah. But I don't think he's all the way gone, but he's pretty villainous in this one. Well, you know, it, it's it's the whole it's the whole you got to think of it more like, you know, he's drunk. Yeah. You know, when you're drunk, you don't realize the things you're doing or the things you're saying. Very Not that true. that excuses your behavior sometimes. <laughs> no.
Yeah, this episode was directed by Richard J. Lewis. Last week's was David Nutter. Um, both well, very good directors, but I guess Richard J. Lewis just... Maybe he had a little bit more to work with with this episode. I don't know. And I love I love this whole sequence with 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 the with the sheriff. Both the sequences with the sheriff. Mm. And he's trying to get them to listen to him. But you know, like anybody, even in the real world, somebody comes up to you. You know, you're a cop, and they say, uh, "We have a vampire." They're gonna look at you like you're crazy. Yeah. Although. This cop is living in a world where there's a flying boy that saves people's lives and aliens regularly attack and there's magic and witches and shit like that. They probably shouldn't be super unsurprised the vampires exist too. But that's something you can say about so many superhero TV shows and stuff. I think even Smallville did a few things like that where it's like they can believe in many things but not everything. But I guess, you know, vampires technically were invented as fiction first. So yeah. if it happened the same way in their universe, where it just turns out, you know, the fiction maybe was based on fact, but nobody knows that, I can kind of understand it. I, and I love the little Andy Griffith <laughs> reference here. Where he says, let me guess, Floyd runs the barber shop. Even with his character growth in, in this episode, Andy is still a snarky son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. Well, you wouldn't want him to lose all of his personality, you know. But yeah, it's great that they're sort of showing the vampirism as an addiction in this episode, especially considering, you know, it opened with a couple of addicts stealing his medicine. Yeah. It's, it's funny, isn't it, though? Most addicts are looking for the medicine. He turns this way when he can't get a hold of it. Yeah, it's like a guy who's insane curing himself by smoking crystal meth or something. It's, <laughs> yeah. It's a little bit little bit strange. But I like it. Also chaining him up, I mean it's a cool visual. I can't imagine that was comfortable for Gerard though. But still, he's used to flying on wires. Maybe this was actually slightly better because he's got more uh, surface area holding him up yeah and he's got vampire teeth I tell you what, though, if it wasn't for Superboy's will being able to resist this, Superboy becoming an actual vampire would be friggin' terrifying, because how would you stop him? Yeah. Although, you know, the part, the part that I have, the, the problem that I have with him being turned, mm. and this was, this was established in a later Superman book, um, He's got the sun essentially running through his blood. Yeah, it's literally where his powers come from. So if he was to remain a vampire, he would eventually probably become powerless just because he wouldn't be able to go out in the sun ever. Unless he did that thing from uh, Dark Knight Returns after the new crew puts his hands on the floor and sucks all the life out of all the plants around him. Yeah. Which I always thought was a cool visual in a book that I'm not 
wildly in love with. It didn't do everything. Yep, and this right. is what I was talking about. You know what? What you know? Going back to what Byron said, the will behind it. His his will is off the charts. Yeah. And this isn't the last time we see that uh, that cross. Really. Um, Abandon Earth. Where is it in Abandon Earth? When he's is it inside his fortress. Yes. Huh. I never noticed that. Always thought it was a shame that he didn't have more scenes at his proto fortress. But then it, it never looked particularly good. Like maybe they just figured, you know, if we can't do it well on our budget, we should probably just not do it at all. I tell you what, Lana uh, Lana. Stacy makes a pretty good vampire, you know. Okay, the teeth do a lot of the work as well, but the fire in her eyes just then as she was going to bite Andy, like. And you say she played a vampire on another TV show after this? Yeah, it was called Kindred. It was on the Fox Network. Was it any it good? It only lasted six episodes. It was on Fox, though. So yeah. six episodes means it was probably Oscar worthy. <laughs> Because the Fox Network only cancel the good shows. If it's shit, it will last 20 seasons. Unless it's The Simpsons. I mean, The Simpsons has been shit for a while, though. It was great in its day. It probably should have been cancelled around season 10 at the absolute latest. Yeah. Actually, I would have cancelled it just after the episode where Tony Hawk was in it. I think it was like the 300th episode or something. That's when I would have ended it because that was a pretty damn good episode. Yeah. I'm so glad that Byron got redeemed right at the end here because if they had killed him off while he was still a villain, that would have been a really tragic end. Yeah. You know, and, and yeah, the easiest way to look at it is, you know, he's not responsible for the actions. No, it's the demon inside him. It's like Joel says in the first season of Buffy, might have even been the first episode or the second episode of Buffy. It's, you know, when you go up against a vampire that used to be someone you care about, you're not fighting your friend. You're fighting the thing that killed him. Yeah. Byron is an exception, but still very much relevant to that. <laughs> and this is where we get the big reveal. Dracula. It's even that little bit of lighting with the blue... The blue lighting on the smoke, like, yeah, very classic. Yeah, that was definitely better than, definitely better than the first one in maybe every conceivable way. Some of the visual effects, okay, still don't hold up, yeah. but I mean, that's just an issue with the show anyway. But overall, I think that was a pretty good episode. You know, if the yeah, last I one's would... a seven, this is at least an eight, maybe an 8.5 even. I would go 8.5 on this. Yeah. You know, the what really takes it down for me is a, you know, some of the, some of the visual effects, which were a little wonky. And the yeah. fact that, you know, we didn't get anything more after this. Yeah. I would have loved to have seen what that character would have done in season three because the tone of season three probably fit that character better than any other season of the show. Like, even season four was a little bit brighter than three. 
So, yeah. man, it's a shame that we never got to see him again. The same way, you know, it's the same thing we say about not just this character, but Mixtus Pitlick and Nick Knack and so many other characters that appeared in season two that I wish we could have seen at least one more time, you know? Yeah. But there yeah. you go. I mean, yeah, overall, this is this is definitely an 8.5, you know. You know it has its yeah. little wonkiness, but overall, it's probably one of the best of season two. I definitely agree. And, you know, it's one of those things where every now and then you'll get a sequel where it's so much better than the first one that it almost makes the first one like almost just makes the first one better by comparison or whatever yeah. you know it elevates the original i think this is one of those cases i think this episode is so much better better than the first one that the first one i'd know maybe the score could be raised from seven to 7.5 but i'm not going to do that right but I don't know. Maybe that's why so many people have such a soft spot for young Dracula. Maybe it's not even about the first episode. Maybe it's this one. But because, you know, it's a two-parter separated by multiple episodes. Maybe if it was actually one after another and they just had like a six months later or something at the end of it. I don't know. It could have been fun. Either yeah. way really solid episode you know absolutely definitely definitely very solid episode you know uh writing was a lot better on this one than than the, the previous oh, one um, definitely. acting was top notch as always you know andy got you know more more to do in this episode so i can i can see you know elon's comments over the last few years that you know you know he really didn't have much to do in superboy but this is one of those episodes where his statement is not true yeah, he was uh, an this one part. programmed for death, you know, haunting of Andy McAllister. He has things to do in most episodes. I think the main thing, though, the main reason he feels like he didn't have that much to do is one because I doubt he's watched it in for very in very long. So maybe his memory of the show is a little bit, you know, iffy. Right, as it would be with most people, you know. I seriously doubt a lot of people remember absolutely every day they worked on a show like this yeah so maybe that's partly it but i think it's mostly because his character development for the most part didn't happen in individual episodes like it was little seeds of things planted here and there throughout the entire season and it's only when you put it all together that you really see what they were doing with the character I don't yeah. think you can really see that from any one episode. Yeah, and you know, the fact that this episode is after uh, Program for Death, it really shows that he has matured, you know? Because, yeah. I mean, pa Program for Death is really the episode where he grows up. Absolutely. You yeah. know? And maybe, maybe the reconciliation with his father kind of helped him to, you know, say, you know what? I'm hanging around with this with these two people who are great and I'm it, continuously encountering this hero, this heroic character, you know, maybe I should start thinking about the things I'm doing. Yeah. And I mean, it, it shows right here, you know, that he is trying. The fact that he's still snarky when he's doing it is <laughs> kind of funny. Yeah, but, you know, I wouldn't want Andy to change that much, you know. Yeah. When Andy starts off, can't stand him. From in episode, like the first episode he's in, even the first few, I really don't like that character at all. But he does have a progression. And considering how episodic this show is, it's kind of a miracle that they actually got away with having a kind of serialized story arc for him. Because you don't really see it coming until you actually sit down and analyze these episodes. You know, when we do our commentaries, sometimes we're seeing things that maybe wouldn't even have occurred to us before. Because previous times we've watched this, we're watching it just to enjoy it. Yeah. Whereas now we're looking for things to talk about. So we're noticing all these little details. It's why I always appreciate the lighting and stuff like that and the direction. You know, when we did our spotlight on Super Menace and the tumbleweed blows by, it's just... Oh, was that... No, that was Super Menace. Yeah. Just little 
pieces of directorial flair. I just, I th- I'm finding I'm appreciating more and more as we're doing these commentaries. And with any yeah. luck, you know, if there's anybody out there that's only ever watched Superboy from start to finish once, maybe watching it with the commentaries, maybe we're helping demonstrate why we love this show as much as we do. And hopefully we can help other people to uh, appreciate the show a little bit more too. But uh, other than that, I can't think of anything else really I wanted to say on this episode. I think we covered it while the episode was playing. I think, Um, I think, I think we've, we've said all that can be said about run Dracula run for right now. Yeah. And that title that title's got to be a reference. Is it? Is it Scream Black uh, Dracula? Is it Scream Dracula or Scream Blackula Scream? Scream Blackula Scream. Right. That's the that's the one with Pam Greer. Yeah, I love black exploitation movies. Like Doctor Black and Mister Hyde is one of my favorite movies, just because Bernie Casey is hilarious in it. Because it's it's obvious they did not have a good budget on that show, and it's just so funny seeing all these like people going hey have you seen a white guy come by here even though all it is is bernie casey with talcum powder all over his face (laughs) he looks more like a zombie than a white guy his face is like his skin looks gray uh really funny he's like one of the one of the uh, one of the one of the one of the family from uh the omega man yeah he i i've never even seen the omega man he looks like a he looks like a low budget. He looks like a dawn of the original Dawn of the Dead style zombie. Mm. He's just grey. And yeah, he's still got an afro, but now it's white because they put loads of talcum powder in his in his hair. It just, if it's on Tubi, I'm gonna have to watch it. It's it's one of my favorite black exploitation films. It's just absolutely hilarious because it's just not good. It's not good at all. But it does have one of the best trailers of all time because it was during the era where all trailers had a narrator. Yeah. And the narrator for this one does the entire thing in rhyme. And right at the end of the trailer, it just goes, Dr. Black and Mr. Hyde, don't give him no sass or he'll kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> just, I've always loved that tagline. And it's one of the best trailers ever. Yeah. yeah. Really off topic now, but it is Halloween month. If you like that era of movie, very low budget horror, there's worse films to watch. I think it's even on YouTube. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching once again. Be sure to tune in again next time where we'll be doing a commentary on Werewolf from, is it season three or season four Werewolf? Season three. Season Season three. three. So be sure to tune in for that. We'll see you then. Goodbye. Viacom 